Welcome back and Happy New Year. I hope that 2022 will be a very happy, very healthy and peaceful year for you. I also want to say thank you so much for all the love and support you have given me over this past year. I am so grateful to every single one of you and for every single one of you and I'm so happy you're here. Now, I have gotten quite a few requests to make a video on how to stay fit in our 50s. So and that is what we are talking about today. How to stay fit and healthy in our 50s and beyond. Now, first of all, fit is somewhat of a relative term and it means something different to all of us. Also, many different components are going to affect how physically fit one is going to be really at any age. Our genetics, of course, our athletic background, our likes and dislikes, just to name a few. However, I truly believe we can be fit and healthy at any age. And age is definitely not a limitation nor a handicap to fitness. But that being said, as we age, we do face a couple of challenges when it comes to our physical fitness. One of them is because of a decline in hormones. Now, often when we think about gaining or maintaining muscle mass, we just think of the hormone testosterone. However, the mostly female hormone estrogen also plays a big role, not just in our body size, but in how much muscle we are able to build and maintain. Estrogen actually increases our anaerobic response to exercise and thereby helps us maintain or obtain muscle mass. Oestrogen also helps regulate our metabolism, versus a lack of oestrogen can increase fat accumulation, especially visceral fat or belly fat. So it is not just testosterone that affects how much muscle we are going to carry on our frame, but also oestrogen. Now, why is it important for us to have muscle mass, especially as we age? Muscle, first of all, is metabolically active, meaning it burns more calories to stay alive than fat does. So theoretically, the more muscle mass we have, the higher our metabolism. Secondly, muscle basically keeps us upright, holds our bones together, so it helps with posture, helps prevent injury. Thirdly, losing muscle mass is really not ideal for bone density and can lead to osteoporosis. Now, as we age, we don't just experience loss of muscle because of a decline in hormones, but all of us as we age also deal with what is called age-related muscle loss or sarcopenia. Sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss starts as early as our 30s and as early as our 30s we lose muscle mass at a rate of 3 to 5 percent per decade. Now, 3 to 5 percent per decade might not sound like a big deal, but sarcopenia coupled with the muscle we lose because of a decline in hormones is really not ideal. However, as depressing as this might sound, like I said, I truly believe we can be fit and healthy at any age. So as we age, one of the most important things we can do is to counteract this loss of muscle mass. And of course, one of the best things to do so is weightlifting. I know oftentimes, especially as women, when we hear the term weightlifting, we get a bit intimidated or we get afraid to get bulky. Don't worry, we're not going to get bulky, but lifting weights is really essential as we get older to keep this muscle, this metabolically active muscle on our frame, again, to keep our metabolism as high as possible, to help with posture, to help prevent injury, but also to help prevent osteoporosis. And the way weightlifting helps to keep our bones nice and strong is, let's say this is a free weight, and I'm going to do a bicep curl. So as I am contracting my bicep against gravity, my bicep shortens. This, of course, pulls on the ligaments, tendons, and the bone. It puts stress on the bone. The bone has to respond to the stress and it does so by getting stronger. So lifting weights, again, 
is not just important to keep this metabolically active muscle mass on our frame to help with posture and to prevent injuries, but it is also crucial for bone density. Now, something else you can do to keep your bones nice and strong is to have some impact here and there. So to do some running, some sprinting, some jump roping, some plyometric exercises, all of that again puts some stress on the bone, the bone response by getting stronger. And on top of doing some weightlifting and or some impact, high intensity interval training, yet another intimidating sounding word, but not scary at all, can also be quite beneficial, especially as we get older. Because not only does it help counteract this loss of muscle mass, but it also helps increase our aerobic capacity, which of course running and sprinting and all of those things do as well. But increasing our aerobic capacity, especially as we age, is quite important as well. Because as we age, our cardiac output declines as a result of our maximal heart rate declining with age. Yet the ability to maintain a high aerobic capacity is a major determinant of an older person's functional independence. So two very important things we can do as far as our physical fitness as we get older are counteracting this loss of muscle mass and maintaining our aerobic capacity. Something else we have to be a bit concerned with as we age is loss of collagen. Now, of course, we talk about losing collagen in skincare videos quite a bit. And I have talked about in skincare videos how in the first five years of menopause, we lose 30% of our collagen. Now, we start losing collagen at a steady rate at age 20. But once we get into menopause, again, in the first five years of menopause, we lose 30% of our collagen. Of course, when we think about collagen, again, we think about our skin. But this loss of collagen also affects the rest of our connective tissue, our ligaments, joints, tendons, and bones, leaving us more vulnerable to ligament and joint injuries, and again, bone fractures. Now, we just talked about what to do to keep our bones nice and strong, doing some weightlifting, some HIIT workouts, having some impact, but to keep our ligaments, joints, and tendons healthy, it is important to work on our range of motion and keep our joints nicely lubricated. And we can do so by stretching. Stretching is really important no matter what age, because just by living, we shorten our muscles. Just by sitting, we shorten our muscles. And we want to make sure to elongate them again to help prevent injury. But as we age, Having a regular stretching routine can be quite beneficial. And then lastly, balance, unfortunately, is something else that declines as we age. Once more, leaving us vulnerable to bone breaks through falls. So doing some balance exercises can be quite beneficial. Now you can do your stretching and balance together, doing some yoga, or you can do it separately. Now, all of this might sound like a whole bunch of work, but think quality over quantity. Try to get about two weightlifting or resistance sessions in per week, focusing on your major muscle groups. When lifting weights, also think quality over quantity. That doesn't just mean having good form, but also choosing weights actually heavy enough to challenge our muscles and bones to get stronger. Now, of course, if you're a beginner, work your way up. You can use your own body resistance but make sure to actually challenge the muscles and bones so they have to adapt and get stronger. Then on top of these two weightlifting or resistance sessions per week, try to get one or two HIIT workouts. Now, the nice thing about HIIT workouts, they are quick. You can get a great HIIT workout in 10 minutes, again, counteracting this loss of muscle mass while also maintaining aerobic capacity. Now, usually when doing HIIT workouts, there will be some jumping, some impact. However, if hit is not your thing, you can do some jumping or some impact separately. That is, of course, if your joints allow it. So if your joints allow it, go for a run, put some sprints in between that run, do some jump roping, have some fun with it. And then after your workouts, do some stretching, or you can do a couple of yoga sessions per week, also thereby incorporating your balance exercises. 
Now you can also work on balance when lifting weights, but make sure one way or another to incorporate some balance exercises. And then something else that can be very beneficial for our overall physical fitness at any age is to be as physically active as we can outside of these planned workouts. Studies actually show that just increasing our activities of daily living, so anything other than sitting on our behind, can drastically improve our physical fitness. In this study, for example, office workers were encouraged to take the stairs instead of the elevator. And after just 12 weeks of taking the stairs instead of the elevator, there was a drastic improvement in aerobic capacity there was also a significant decline in waist circumference, weight, fat mass, diastolic blood pressure, as well as LDL cholesterol. So all of these amazing changes just from taking the stairs instead of the elevator. So being as physically active as we can outside of these planned workouts, really doing anything other than sitting on our behind, so gardening, cleaning the house, can be quite beneficial to increase our overall fitness really at any age and then lastly of course we can't talk about physical fitness without at least mentioning diet diet is a subject for a whole nother video if you want me to make it let me know down below but as i said we have to at least mention diet since we are talking about physical fitness now personally i do not believe in dieting i do not believe in calorie restriction or restriction of any kind of course, many of you know I eat a vegan diet, but it has nothing to do with restriction. It's an ethical choice. I believe in eating nutritious, whole foods the body recognizes and in fueling the machine. So we have energy to work out and to increase our activities of daily living. And then I also do not weigh myself and I haven't weighed myself in, I can't remember, because I do not believe that an arbitrary number on a scale says anything about my or your fitness or health. Now, if you want to know sort of my typical workouts, I made a video last year on sort of a typical week of my workouts. I will link it down below. And if you want me to make a new one, I'm happy to let me know in the comments. I have to mention really fast, and if you have been here for a while, you know this, because I have made several videos on this subject. I am on hormone replacement therapy. And I have been since I was 38. I just turned 53. So I have been on HRT for about 15 years. Now, hormone replacement therapy is a very personal decision. And by no means am I saying you have to be on HRT to be physically fit. I made the decision for myself. And I definitely believe that being on HRT has helped my physical fitness because I remember how I felt before. But again, by no means am I saying you have to be on HRT to be physically fit. And I truly believe we can be physically fit and healthy at any age with or without HRT. But in my case, it definitely helped to be on hormone replacement therapy. I just had to mention that. So this is it. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know down below any questions or comments. You know, I always love to hear from you. And also, I would love to know how do you stay fit? Any tips or tricks, share them down below. Also share down below any struggles you might have with physical fitness. And, and that's it. Again, I hope you will have a wonderful, happy, healthy new year. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.